Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy. In this video, I'll show you how to use Ultrabeat within Logic Pro 10 to synthesize and sequence your own tuned 808 bass sounds. So let me give you a quick example of what I'm talking about. So the key thing about this is that you'll be able to create multiple 808s at multiple different pitches. You won't have to use any samples whatsoever, and each of the 808 sounds, no matter how many you use, will automatically uh, gate each other. Essentially, we're going to put them in a monophonic group. You know, For example, if two 808s overlap each other, the second 808 will cut off the first 808, um, so you can get things like, like this going on. Let me mute my hi-hats and my snare and clap there. So no matter how many 808s I throw in the sequence, they'll automatically uh, gate each other or cut each other off so you don't get this mush of a bunch of overlapping polyphonic 808s. So let me start from scratch here. I'm just gonna completely uh, delete my uh, track here and start from scratch. So I'm gonna create a software instrument. Uh, I'm gonna load up Ultrabeat as my instrument. Now, Ultrabeat, you know, it catches a lot of bad flack and I really don't think it should. It, it's an old, really old instrument. It's been around forever, but it's still very viable. Um, a lot of people will probably ask, why not use the drum machine designer instead? And the reason why is the drum machine designer is essentially Ultrabeat in disguise, whether you realize it or not. They just put a new face on Ultrabeat, and what actually powers drum machine designer is Ultrabeat. So I, I rarely find myself using drum machine designer. Um, so what I'm going to do is load up the drag and drop samples kit. And I'm only loading this up just because it's a blank kit with nothing in it. It's just a good starting point for really anything. And I said we're not going to use any samples. So on my bottom uh, note here, C1, I'm just going to call this 8081. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to change this from a sample loading zone into a phase oscillator. I'm also going to turn on my FM oscillator up here. So one of the cool things about using Ultrabeat's oscillators is that you can pitch it um, any way you want right here. So it's saying that right now this is C3. That's way too high for an 808. So I'm going to pull this down to something quite a bit lower. Getting a little lower. Let me go down all the way down to like A0. Work in A minor. There we go. So A0. You can hear that low sub. Um, let's go ahead and change the upper oscillator down to A0 as well. Now, because I'm um, using the FM oscillator, yeah, there we go. You can play around with different pitches, you know, using one as the carrier, using one as the modulator, but for this, I think this will be okay. Um, what I'm gonna do, just so I can have something playing while I'm um, designing the sound, I'm just gonna go into my full view here. This pulls up the step sequencer, and I'm just gonna just type in a little really basic pattern there. I'll hit play. Now, my favorite way to get the sort of classic 808 sound is to use a triangle wave down here, and you can do that by pulling the slope up here to make this more of like a triangle sound. So it gives it a few more overtones. And then you can play around with the FM amount up here just by pulling it up a little bit more or a little bit less, uh, and you'll get some different added sidebands or overtones. Now, what really traditionally makes the 808 sound like an 808 is really two things. One, you want the sound to sort of ring out. So when you load up the Ultra B in drag and drop samples mode, what it does is it automatically makes envelope four over here control the volume or amplitude or amplifier of the oscillators. So if you pull out the release time here, you'll see that the length of each note extends uh, much further. Pretty loud, I'm just gonna pull the main volume down a bit here.
And then the second thing that traditionally makes an 808 sound like an 808 is actually a pitch scoop at the front end of the note. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use envelope number one here to create a pitch uh, drift at the front end of both of my oscillators. So what you can do is right here where it says modulation off, switch this to envelope one, and this will add a little blue bar to our pitch. So think of the blue bar as the starting pitch of the pitch scoop, and then uh, the red bar is where the actual fundamental of the sound is going to be. So our starting pitch was A0, so I'm going to make this uh, modulated pitch up an octave. So I'll set this to A1, and I'll do the same up here. I'll set modulation to envelope 1 as our modulation source, and then I'll pull this up to A1. So now I have to go over to my envelope number one here and adjust the envelope a bit. So right now my decay time is pretty far out, so what's gonna, uh, what this is gonna sound like is like this. Now that could, that's a, that could be a cool sound on its own, but it's not like really a classic 808 sound. So what I'm gonna do is pull in the decay time quite a bit, pull out the release, or excuse me, pull out the attack time a little bit. Let me just see if I can get, there we go. Pull the attack out just a touch and pull the decay back in. So it creates that little um, front end punch is that uh, pitch, uh, that pitch uh, dive at the front end of each note. Now, what I like to do is I like to add um, uh, distortion to this as well. So there's a filter and distortion unit in the middle here. Um, if these little arrows are pointing inward, that means that both oscillators are going to the filter slash distortion unit. So I'm gonna turn on the distortion unit and play around with the drive and color and level, see if I get a, a tone that I like better. So it gives it a bit more of a bite. Another thing you can do, it's totally optional, is you can throw in the noise generator here, pretty much like a third oscillator, and you can control its volume with that quick pitch envelope that we had before. But instead of using it for pitch, we're gonna use it for volume. So I can pull the volume all the way down, but pull the modulation amount up. And so what this means is a quick little blip of noise is gonna come in at the front of each note. And you can change the type of filter uh, you want the noise to be filtered through. So you can choose low pass, high pass, or band pass, and adjust the cutoff frequency, resonance for the noise, and resonance for the filter, rather. And then you can add dirt uh, to it as well. So if you want sort of like a front end little knock on that note, you can do that as well. So from here, before we start copying and pasting this to other uh, notes, what I recommend doing is making sure that you get the specific sound uh, that you really like. So go through and play with some of the modulation parameters and get the tone the way you want it, because once we copy and paste it, it's going to be difficult to go back and adjust each one. So I added in a bit of the ring modulator here, and then there's a bit of a spread feature where you can spread the high and low frequencies. Really, the low frequencies I don't want much spread in, but I spread the highs, even though there's not much high frequency content here. It just sort of opened up uh, the note a bit. Okay, so once you're um, happy with the tone that you have, and we can actually still uh, alter this later uh, in mixing. I'll show you that in just a bit. But once you're happy with this, you can right click on the voice here, the lane, and you can say uh, copy voice and sequence. Click on the next one up, right click and say paste voice and just continue up as many 
voices as you want. Now you could do this chromatically. You could map out a whole um, set of 808s going from like, you know, the note C all the way up to C. But uh, for my song, I really just want four notes. I want A, which I'm on now. And then on my second one, I want uh, the third note of the A minor scale, which is C. So I'm going to change the oscillator pitch to C0, uh, or C1, rather. I'll change this one to C1 as well. So I've got two pitches now. My third one, I'm going to bump this up to the sixth note of... A minor, which is F1. And then the last one, I'm actually going to down tune to G0. So this is a uh, the seventh note of A minor. So now in my step sequencer, I can go through and I can type in different notes in the sequence. Uh, one thing I probably should do is rename these. So this is 808C. And uh, just to sort of get the creative juices flowing, um, I'm going to import like a hi-hat and a snare or clap sample in here. Just something to give me some rhythm to work with. Just working with 808s alone is kind of hard. So you could actually uh, drag and drop your own samples on some of these other keys if you wanted. Um, but what I'm going to do is just uh, click import up here, go up to drum kits, find a drum kit that I want to use. I'll use this uh, classic hip hop remix kit. What it does is it shows the import kit here and you can drag in the sounds that you want into your uh, existing kit. So there's a hi-hat closed I'll throw in there. There's a hat pedal I'll throw in here as well. I'm not really following the GM drum kit um, because I've already, um, you know, put the bass down here on my first four voices. There's a gated snare. And then there's a clap. Pull that in as well. And then you just click up here, and it pulls away the imported kit. So now I just have voices right here on the first eight notes. And I can create a sequence with these. Let me create a sequence just with um, the hi-hats and uh, the clap real quick. Okay, so that's just something to keep time. Now, one thing I'm going to make sure that I do here is for each of my 808 sounds, right now if I play two of them really close to each other, they overlap. So what I want to do is I want to put these in what's called a monophonic group or an exclusive group. Uh, typically, these are used for hi-hats, not for basses and, and kick drums and things like that. But if you put these in a monophonic group, it means only one voice can play at a time. So when you have two overlapping voices, the second voice will gate or cut off uh, the first one. So this is really easy to do in, in Ultra Beat. You just click on the voice, go over here to where it says uh, trigger, single, and then group. Instead of off, change this to one. This is going to put this voice in exclusive group number one. So then I'll do that same thing for each of the 808 sounds. I'll put them in group one. Now, one really tricky thing you want to make sure you do is check your other samples or your other imported sounds because they may already be going to a group. For example, uh, my hi-hats are going to group one already. Um, that was just left over from the programming from that drum kit. So I'm going to turn that off because if I don't turn these off, then these other samples are going to affect my 808 sounds. Um, you could put them in a separate, a separate group if you wanted to, or you could put your 808s in group two rather than group one. But you just don't want your hi-hats and your 808s in the same exclusive monophonic group. So now let me just come up with a little pattern for my 808s.
So the 808s are cutting each other off. They're working like a bass instrument, but also kind of like a kick drum. So now what I'm going to do is drag my sequence into the arrange area, into the main area. So you just down here, there's a little button that says drag to arrange window. Drag that in. There's that sequence. And what I can do now is I can create another sequence up here. Maybe I want to continue this idea, but vary it a little bit. So maybe the second repetition, I don't want as much bass on the back end. So I can drag my new pattern in. Uh, let's come up with something else. So I'll pull that in. And then maybe for my fourth repetition, I'll just uh, duplicate the second one again. So now that I have my sequence imported into my main window, I no longer have to keep my sequencer on. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to load this as a multi-output uh, drum instrument so I can mix the 808 separately from the hats and from the clap and from the snare. This is going to allow us to further modulate the tone of the 808s if we want. So what I'm going to do is set all four of the 808s to subgroup one. I'm going to set the clap and the snare to subgroup two. Then I'm going to set the hi-hats to subgroup three. And then what you're going to do is change ultra beat from stereo mode to multi-output mode. And what this will do is it'll basically just reload ultra beat in multi-output mode. You can close out the ultra beat window, pull up your mixer, and in multi-output mode, you'll see this little plus sign down here. I'm going to click on that twice. So essentially, think of the first channel as subgroup one. That's where the 808s are going to be. The second channel is going to be subgroup two. That's where the snare and clap is going to be. And then the third channel is where the hats are going to be, because that's subgroup three. So now you can independently... Uh, Adjust the volume on these, pan these, and add whatever plugins you like. So maybe I want to add a bit more of a bass boost to the 808s and EQ them differently. Now for my clap, I'm just going to add some reverb to it. And then on my hi-hats, I'll add the stereo delay. Just to give it a bit of uh, a bit more motion. But the cool thing here is it breaks up, if you use multi-output mode, it breaks up the drum kit into all these different um, channels. So you can individually mix your 808s and your other instruments in the drum kit and you don't have to create a bunch of different channels. I've seen a lot of projects from people who uh, they use 808 samples or they have like one 808 sound and one pitch per track. And that's a huge waste of CPU resources. And just it's just clutter in the mix. Here you can do all of this from one channel, build everything in a single sequence, modulate everything within one synthesizer, add some effects to modulate it further, and then mix it uh, independently. So that's how you can create your own pitched 808s in Ultra Beat in Logic Pro 10. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Also, I'm now a Sweetwater affiliate. So if you buy any audio or music gear from Sweetwater, uh, use my affiliate link below and that helps support the channel. I get a little kickback um, from each sale that's made over there. If you want to check me out on social media, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And if you'd like to make a monthly contribution to the channel, you can check me out at patreon.com forward slash music tech help guy. Thanks for the support and thanks for watching.